There was a magic about the sea. People were drawn to it. People wanted to love by it, swim in it, play in it, look at it. Cecilia Ahern After leaving Black Point, we headed down to overnight at Ruttercut Key on our way to Georgetown to get a glimpse of the mermaid. Our research had us leaning towards snorkeling her first thing in the morning, but as the afternoon progressed, the winds laid down, so we decided to venture out during slack tide to see if the current would be too strong for us to snorkel and then allow us to leave earlier in the morning. It has a hole in the top. Rudder Cut Key is owned by David Copperfield, and here is some history from the Bahamas Cruiser's Guide. Rudder Cut Key was once owned by an insurance entrepreneur in Florida who lost the island to the Florida Insurance Commission when the company failed. A large house crowned the hill on the south end of the key. There remains a large dredge boat basin with an inlet on the center of the key on the west side. All the structures, docks, support buildings, and houses are in ruins as of 2016. Visitors on land are discouraged as there are occasionally guard dogs that roam the island. I, I know I see that boat over there and I'm like, huh, is that where that dinghy's going? Oh, there's the cave. There were tons of signs posted everywhere, but we saw no one, just cruisers who ventured in to hang out on the beach. Journey had such a shallow draft, we were pretty much in the small cove protected, or so we thought. Musha and Rudder Keys are two of several private keys in the area owned by the world famous magician David Copperfield. Musha Key is a private exclusive resort. Rudder Cut Key is uninhabited and provides the private airstrip for the guests at Musha Key. Probably walk from one beach to, to the other, what they did. According to the website Atlas Obscure, a strange surprise waits beneath the waves for snorkelers, splashing through the waters around magician David Copperfield's private islands. Just off the coast of Ruttercut Key, swimmers will find a life-size sculpture of a mermaid lounging atop the sandy ocean floor. The mermaid waits near the bench of a baby grand piano as if beckoning divers to sit down and play her a tune. The stainless steel sculpture is hidden about 12 to 15 feet below the surface and can be a bit difficult to spot when the current stirs up the sand and clouds the water. It makes discovering them on a clear day feel all the more magical. Snorkelers capable of holding their breath for a while like to swim down and pose atop the bench as if they too belong in this underwater world. Copperfield, who owns the multiple private islands within the Bahamas, commissioned the artwork from Jason Taylor and had it sunk as a quirky surprise for the few exclusive guests who stay on the private island and those who take boat trips to snorkel off the shore.
After snorkeling the sculpture, we explored the island from Shelby, including the dredged boat basin I shared earlier, before heading back to Journey. We were so glad we made this decision to snorkel in the afternoon, because before daybreak, we would wake to a thunderstorm and wind swinging us toward the rock wall. As soon as day broke, we pulled anchor and got out of there. We're off to Georgetown, tired and hopeful for a quiet spot in Crab Key, otherwise known as Red Shanks near Georgetown, Exumas. We'll be catching up with old friends and making some new ones.